Every aspect of life has been affected by COVID-19, including the jobs market. When you're seeing headlines like these, it's really easy to feel demotivated and feel like nobody's hiring at the moment. Well, that's not necessarily true. Plenty of the companies that we work with are still going strong during lockdown. In fact, many of the companies are in industries that have been positively affected by lockdown, such as development agencies and finance companies. Here are just some of the graduates that have found work during lockdown. This is Connie, Imogen, Jordan, Katie and Judith. What tips do you have for people um, looking for jobs in this current climate and really staying motivated whilst they are searching for jobs? I'd say only really spend 30 minutes a day typically in the morning applying for jobs um, and no more than that because applying for jobs can be really draining and I think it's important to actually focus on upskilling and working on your coding um, the majority of the time so you kind of don't spend all day trudging through job adverts. It's important to take breaks every now and again like so obviously you should try and apply for as many jobs as you can but um, don't stress yourself out unnecessarily about the number of applications you put in it. And also take time away from the computer. Um, yeah. I think if, you, if you're literally just sat in front of a screen all day, um, it can get a bit much sometimes. So take a, take a 10 minute walk and I guarantee you'll feel better after that. I think one thing that's very important is to actually value themselves, or should I say value yourselves, um, because I found that many people, especially fresh graduates, would think that may, maybe they are not good enough for the role that they are applying to, but that's not the case. We got enough experience and, and we, we know how to learn as well. Um, yeah. I think imposter syndrome is a very big word here as well again, um, that we just think that we're not good enough, but no one ever knows everything and that's just probably the nature of software development, that you always learn something new and there's, you never know everything. And I think that's very hard to accept, but it's very important. I definitely felt like it was something wrong with me and that I didn't have like the skills and, you know, the biggest thing I think that helped me was looking back and remembering how much I'd learned and how far I'd come just in like, you know, half a year of coding and only really like a few months of doing really intense coding. And then being able to like, picture myself in another six months and how like I'd be in a job and I'd be where I wanted to be and how much better at coding I would be so I guess my biggest tip is to remember like it's not you it's just the circumstances that um, you're struggling with jobs. I don't know if this is true of everyone but I get a bit more nervous about things over Skype. Yeah when I first interviewed I, I wasn't used to that in the same way so I think um, maybe just having a bit of practice, like recording, your, recording yourself answering a few questions, um, mm. make you feel a bit less awkward going into it. Yeah, and then I guess the more interviews you do, the better you'll get at it. <laughs> I think one of our tips is to differentiate yourself from other people. Um, I think there's a lot of people looking for junior developer roles at the moment, so it's important to find ways to differentiate yourself from others. So. For example, on the course, I learned about Firebase on my final project and in general, I wanted to learn a bit more about cloud computing. So that led me to go on and take the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam, which I passed. Um, but most of all, I learned a lot and I really enjoyed it. And I really feel like that set me apart because it not only gave me a qualification, but it also showed that I was able to carry on learning past the course and learn new things. The one thing that I tried to do, I'm not sure if it if it helped me or um, whether it um, actually put me past the post in any of these applications, but when I was given a task to, to do, I always tried to do one thing more than what, the, what, what was asked for. So I was asked to make a masonry grid um, and they said I could either use PHP or I could use another framework of my choice. Um, I wasn't I wasn't confident with PHP, I'd never used it before, but I knew that's what they did. So I thought, wow. I th thought, you know, you know what, I'll, I'll do both. So I'll do one one way and I'll, I'll do one one way that I'm confident with and gave them both. And that's the one I actually um, got an offer for. So 
at the moment I'm taking two like weekend courses. Um, one of them is uh, Build a Feminist chat box, chat, chat box, which is really interesting in terms of like ethics of coding, which is something that I never really thought about, you know, while I was at North Coders, but now I'm in a job, I think that's really helpful. Um, I've also been writing blogs about my coding journey and the technologies I'm working with. It's something I really enjoy doing and when you're writing something I think it really solidifies your knowledge um, but it also promotes your personal brand online as well. Also I would focus very much on the portfolio um, because I think at some point we think that people will not look at it but they do. Um, I also got into blogging which I know is not everyone's cup of tea but I know that uh, people who were, um, who were interviewing me for my job they actually read the blogs and it just gave me extra things to talk about, more things to talk about. And I think they quite like the fact that they know more about me than if they never read my books. For me, I really gained a lot from the Twitter developer community. So I initially started doing the 100 Days of Code Challenge, which was great. And I'd recommend that to anyone because it really helped me to develop coding as a daily habit. But I also got to network and connect with loads of other developers and just learn things as I was reading the feed and other people's posts and technical content. It just really provides a lot from me. I feel like I've got a lot of value out of that. So try to be present on your social media platforms. Um, people, again, read what you blog about, read your posts. Um, LinkedIn is a very important one. It's very easy to connect with recruiters or even just like-minded people or you find good um, learning resources on LinkedIn as well. I'd also say that it's really important to um, keep in check with your mental health and take breaks, um, you know, take a day without applying for anything and then just relax and come back to it um, when you feel ready so that, because it can be a really draining experience and it's important to take time to take care of yourself as well. Um, I would say don't give up looking for things because there are new jobs going up every week and just because you haven't seen something this week it doesn't mean that there's not going to be another job there next week. I'd say keep coding, um, keep doing things, doing a variety of things whether that's like front end, back end, try a new language, um, keep doing things that excite you and things that you want to do. They just need to really keep their heads up and just keep applying and just it's just that constant determination and you've got to keep digging. My best piece of advice is to keep coding. Right, we know this is hard at the moment but your hard work and resilience is going to pay off and you will get there. Most importantly though, stay safe, look after yourself and look after others.